All right, here we go. Transform. No, hold on. It's really unfortunate when a movie that's actually really good does not succeed in the box office and flops. And it sucks because you can tell that people worked hard on this movie and it just didn't do that well. And I blame the marketing. I'm talking about Transformers 1. So I did a review for Transformers 1, a non-spoiler review when it came out. But today I want to go deeper into the movie. And I had thought about doing a spoiler review myself, but I figured I'd bring Laser Kid on because he's been on the channel before discussing Transformers to discuss this film since I kind of told him, like, you need to see this movie. Like, it's, it's, it's very, like, different from the Michael Bay ones, it's, even though there are similarities. So he's here, and we're going to talk about it. What's up? Hey. Yeah, no, you told me to go see this. I went and saw it, and I do not regret it. Yes, and we're kind of seeing a resurgence in actual good Transformers movies because I liked Bumblebee, I loved Rise of the Beasts, even though I know not everybody did, and I really liked this film, and I want to talk to you about it. So before we go any further, there will be spoiler talk in this video. So um, if you haven't seen the movie yet, please be aware of that. Here's the thing, man. I was really bummed out when this movie flopped, and I think it was because of the trailer. Because I think it was portrayed as kind of a kiddie film. And it's definitely family friendly. When I went to go see it, there were families in the audience. But it's not a kid's movie in the sense that it's just a goofy, like, stupid movie. Like, there's great characters here. There's great arcs. It's a really worthy prequel to everything. So, what were your initial thoughts on the movie coming out of it and... Um, you mentioned that it's basically a remake of an old G1 episode? To an extent. Um, it's kind of mashing several different ideas. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a G1 episode in season two called War Dawn that's about Orion Pax and his girlfriend Ariel and his friend Dion, and they meet Megatron, who's just Megatron, and get themselves killed, and then Alpha Trion rebuilds Ariel and Orion Pax into Optimus Prime and Alita 1. Sound familiar? Yes, yes, except that in this film, uh, he became Optimus by going into the Energon in the, I think it was the yeah. core of the planet, yeah, which was a much yeah. more, that was a very Dragon Ball Z-esque type, it reminded me, it reminded me of Dragon Ball Super Super Hero when Orange Piccolo was falling and then the wish of the dragon ignited Orange Piccolo, like when, he, when Piccolo was falling, it kind of reminded me of that. It kind of, I, I could see that for sure. They're pulling out on the uh, the concept of Primus, which didn't exist yet when Wardon came out, and uh, they're also playing around with the Matrix, which was you know the the '86 movies creation, and they really worked that in well. Uh, what the other thing they really pulled on is the old oh I say old they're only about ten years old now, but the IDW comics continuity, which is where you get a lot of the Megatron origin, and also the aligned continuity, which is the uh, Transformers Prime and the uh, Fall and Rise of, of Cybertron, War of Cybertron, those games, uh, and a few other shows that connect into that where Megatron wasn't always Megatron. Well, it's interesting because JD with the degrees brought that up to me saying this is part of, of that timeline, but uh, in some ways when I'm watching it, it's sort of, be and Michael Bay's listed as a producer. I don't think he actually did that much producing. I think he's just listed because he made the original live action Transformers films, but you, I could also see this as being a prequel to those movies, even though there's a ton of contradictions in those films, especially with the last couple, uh, four and five. Uh, there's weird shit there. But when it comes to... So, okay, is this officially a new continuity? Or is Transformers 1 like a soft reboot with a new universe? Do we know? I don't know if we know, but it sure as heck feels like it. It seems like they're doing, like, again, not to compare to Dragon Ball, but it's kind of like what's going on with Dragon Ball Daima, where they're borrowing ideas from GT and repurposing them. The way you're describing it, they're borrowing ideas from IDW, G1, even some of the Michael Bay films, and putting them into this universe. So, the original origin of Megatron, what you're saying is he was never D16, he was always Megatron? In the G1 cartoon... He was just Megatron, but he was up-and-comer. And he was like, hey, I'm the cool kid. Oh, by the way, I'm going to blow up this power depot because I'm actually rising a revolution. 
Was he friends with Orion Pax? Because I don't seem to nope, remember that. Nope, not at all. Uh, Orion Pax uh, met him and thought he was cool. He was like the, the the bad boy with a cool jacket kind of a character at that in that flashback sequence. It's, um, yeah, and that was interesting because I don't remember ever hearing that they were buddies. So I'm asking you because you're the expert. Maybe there's a G1, comics. absolutely not. Yeah, um, yeah. To, if you want Optimus Prime and Megatron buddies, the earliest version of that that I'm aware of is the IDW comics. Okay, so they borrowed from that. You know, it kind of, I think they were going for this, uh, I think, they were going for like a Revenge of the Sith vibe where you've got yep. these two guys. Like, the movie does a great job of showing that, like, Orion Pax and D16 do care about each other. Like, they, it's a genuine friendship, but... By the end of the film, based on how they perceive the situation going on, you know, like the, the whole thing with, um, with, uh, like the, the, the truth about with Sentinel, Prime. with Sentinel Prime, yeah, and how he was, you know, kind of a, uh, a sellout to his own people, you know, and they both interpreted he was a traitor, that. straight up. He did what? He was a traitor, straight up. Right. Now, w Sentinel Prime's backstory, has that been. Has that been delved into in other forms of media, and was it the same? Yes. Um, it, Sentinel Prime, again, originates in IDW, although, like the same concept, it was also used in, in the aligned continuity with Transformers Prime, but it was different in both of those. Like, different situations, but the same idea. In, in all three versions of the character I'm aware of, you know, he was a, he, um, he was a leader, but it turns out he was evil. Yeah, uh, yeah. But but he reminded me of Homelander. He was a lot like yes. Homelander. Yeah. So, question. Um, what about B-127 as Bumblebee? Yeah. I f okay. That's it's new. That's okay. gotta be new. At least I've never heard of it before. Dude, I was gonna ask you this. But, and I'm not, again, I haven't watched G1 in many years. I do not remember Bumblebee being this important until... The 2007 Michael Bay movie, like Bumblebee's almost like the new Rodimus in that he has to be in everything. Oh yeah, um, Bumblebee in G1, he's there. He's the, he's a you know major face time character. You get a you get a lot of him. He's buddies with Spike, um, right? And he's there, and he's but he's not like Optimus Prime's best buddy. That that's a very Michael Bay starting thing, although not exclusively there. Uh, Transformers animated, especially Transformers Prime, absolutely kind of played around with that idea. Um, but that definitely originates in the Michael Bay movies. How did you feel about Chris Hemsworth and Brian Tyree Hendry playing these younger versions of the characters? I was skeptical because, I, I mean, <laughs> Peter Cullen and Frank Welker are yep. legends. Yep. Uh, and... Um, when I came in, I was a little concerned about that, but you know, honestly, they did a damn good job. I think they did too. I think Brian Tyree Henry didn't fit that well as Megatron, but I also think there was a missed opportunity here because when his eyes turn red and he yeah. went fully evil, in the back of my head, I'm thinking Frank Welker. And that would have been the right move. I right. Agree. And then when Prime got the Energon, well, he wasn't Prime yet. When Pax became Prime, I'm thinking, okay. Here comes Peter Cullen, and that that's could be. What they that could, have done, I would yeah, that's it. what I'm saying. I, I thought they were going to do that, but I guess the idea is that the original plan for this is going to be a trilogy. I don't know if that's still going to happen because of the fact the movie didn't make its money back. It, it, I think the movie was on a 75 million dollar budget, and it made I really 70. Hope it does because I want to see where this goes, but it's really unfortunate it, didn't, it hasn't been doing well. It made 72.5 million on a 75 million dollar budget, so it almost broke even. I'm thinking this movie's going to do well on streaming and maybe through word of mouth. But what I what I was kind of thinking is that at some point in the trilogy. They're going to upgrade them again, and that's when we're going to hear Frank Welker and Peter Cullen. It's just, it's the same thing with Nozawa, man. Any chance you get to use Peter Cullen, do it, because the dude is in his 90s, I think, and it's like, he might not be around for, I mean, dude, this year we lost James Earl Jones, which to me, I know, dude, Gosh. to me, James Earl Jones, when it comes to the legendary voices, is right up there with Peter Cullen, and when he passes, it'll be a sad day. And they and I get going with a younger voice. I get it, but it's just like I don't know, man. Peter Cullen, you know where I'm coming from, right? Like they should use him more. Absolutely. Um, 
I do get where they're coming from as a studio, at least I assume where they're coming from, where they want to build a new voice for these characters because He's old. Peter Cole and Frank Walter are so old. Um, but like you said, you have these imag- imag- you have these amazing legendary voice actors. Use them while you can. Use them while you can. What do you think about Steve Buscemi and Starscream? He did a great job, I thought. I I was I was confused at first. I'm like, this doesn't sound like Starscream. And then he got hurt. And then it was Starscream. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think Buscemi studied the character. And then with Lawrence Fishburne as Alpha Alpha Tryon, I loved it because I feel like he was cast just because they wanted him to say the word Matrix again. Because <laughs> it, it just felt like that. You know, um, what a great... And he's also uh, doing the narration for... The Francis Ford Coppola movie um, Megalopolis, but uh, that just came out. Um, but that movie flopped even harder than this one. But uh, Lawrence Fishburne's voice, man, always welcome with these things. Always. What do you think? Absolutely, uh, I definitely agree. And it's also just nice to see Alpha Tryon get used more. Outside of G One, he's kind of rare. Yeah. It, 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 again, it's like what you said. They borrow from different things. So what was some of the things you did not like about the film? Some of the things that you would change if you were in charge? Um, People are going to hate me for saying this. No, it's your opinion. But my negative is that there is a little too much G1 fan service. Now, I liked it on the one hand because I got to see all, ooh, it's that character. Ooh, it's that character. Ooh, it's that character. Ooh, it's that character. Member berries. But that's oh, what it was. What about the part where she's like, "You don't have, you have, the, you don't have the touch or the power." Come on, man. That, that, that was, was okay. I'm gonna lie. That made me laugh. It made me laugh too, but it was so on the nose. Like yeah, people popped in the movie it. theater. I think yeah. I, I think I saw it with a lot of real hardcore Transformers fans, bro. And that's because who this movie is for. This is a love letter from and to Transformers fans. It feels and like I, it. And I think that's probably now. Again, I, I, I hesitate to say this because I, I like it, but objectively, there's so much fan service that's going to go over the, the uh, heads of younger generations that they were also trying to sell this to. Yeah. The, 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 this really was a, they didn't know who they wanted to sell this to. Is this for hardcore fans? Is this for kids? The marketing makes you think it's for kids. The movie yeah. feels very much for, for fans, but it's kind of trying to do one and the other thing and it didn't really want to choose. Well, and that I, I think really hurt it. I think I think that was the plan. I I do agree that the marketing really hurt the movie because the trailers were not that great. I decided I was going to see it because I, I I do still like watching animated films in the movie theater. Like if there's a certain animated movies in a movie theater, it has a certain like feel to it that I can't really explain. I love any movie in the movie theater, as you know, but I mean like animated movies. There's, there's the colors. The colors just pop and it's just a very warm experience and this had some good animation i mean this was light years ahead of like beast wars you know what i mean like light years ahead of it i hope so it's 30 years later no no but you get what i'm saying like some people no like i think the biggest issue with beast wars was the cg i think the story was fine it's just the cg turned people off cg was state of the art for when it came out and when you watched it in the 90s, it was iPod. Yeah, bro, yeah. it was a 486. It was on a 486 with Windows 3.1, <laughs> bro. You know, that's what it felt like. I, I just I just remember watching it when it was new, and uh, my jaw was on the floor back then. But yeah. yeah, no, it is not H12. I did want to speak to you about this um, whole thing, the whole, like, for kids thing, because I thought, I think if a movie is for kids, let's just say, or, or PG or whatever... I feel like if the characters and the story are good, any adult who loves movies will appreciate it. And I thought that with this movie, if an adult went to go see this film with their kids, and even if they weren't a big fan of G1 or any Transformers, maybe if they were just Michael Bay fans, I, you can't help but walk away from the movie with the fact that it was a good story. And I actually liked the dissolution of the friendship angle because even though it's been done before and I, I I grow tired of like every franchise doing the oh well the bitter rivals were once friends angle it's been done to death but I thought it was very well done here including the scene near the end 
where they show a flashback of when they first met. Like, that was very powerful editing because I felt for Orion Pax. And now these guys are mortal enemies. And also, the scene where Megatron break Sentinel Prime in half, I was like, whoa, like they went there, and yeah, there's no blood, because there's not, not a human being or anything like that, but it's still like, that was, I would say more graphic than I was expecting. Uh, likewise, that was incredibly violent for what we call a kids movie. Now, I think this is a fine movie for kids, because you know what, kids can handle some violence. And it wasn't super uh, gory, but I agree, no, it was no. just, I was just kind of like, whoa, that they actually it went there. Surprising. Yeah, it was surprising. it's I brutal. It's good, I think it's a good family movie because there's something for the kids and there's something for the adults. The reason I said the fans versus the downside, I love it, but I feel like the kids are going to be like random robot number one, two, three, four, five. And the, the problem with it being just fans versus, if you look around in the crowd of the miners, oh, hey, that's Sunstreaker. Oh, hey, that's Wheeljack. Oh, hey, that's Prowl. But if you're a kid, you're just not going to know anything about them, and they don't spend any time on them. Right. Well, you you might know only if you go to your local toy store and buy all the toys. Oh, I know this guy. Like, but but yeah, yeah. a lot of these kids we assume did not watch G one. You know, um, I uh, I thought the story was was actually probably better than a lot of the live action Transformers films were and that's I know that's not saying much but I would agree with you actually um I think yeah. this is the best Transformers movie other than the original yeah this and Rise of the Beasts are really I really love that movie the, the uh, uh Rise, uh, Rise of the Beast was really good um I I like this better than Rise of the Beast only because I think this is a better story but only yes Jaws. Well, right, the, and the thing about Rise of the Beast, and I'm just going to say it, like, it wasn't just the Transformers thing, it was, like, the 90s aesthetic, the 90s hip-hop, like, there were so many things about that film that I had nostalgia for, uh, and it wasn't nostalgia berries, it was like, yes, I actually remember these things, um, and they hit me, and it's just, the characters were super likable, this movie was the first movie I can think of that had no human characters. And that's what people have wanted for years. Absolutely. Um, we go back to the day six movie. There were two. Yes. And that's what I was going to say. There's, a, there's I only had a couple. Here we're on Cybertron. There's no humans. We're at, I think a lot of people that went to go see the Michael Bay movies were just waiting for like a Cybertron film. Like one that takes place on Cybertron. And we got this instead. The problem is, and this is something that I really hate. And I think you and I are on the same boat when it comes. Well, we have to be on the same boat or else you'd be a hypocrite. I do not like the fact that animation is way too often slept on by Western audiences. I think there's oh, still, man. there's a bias here. Not as much as there was in the 80s and 90s, but there is a bias here where people see something animated and they say, oh, it's for kids, it's garbage. I have friends of mine who love Star Wars who have not seen the Clone Wars or Rebels and I'm like, listen, this is like better than some of the recent movies. And they're like, I'm sure it is, but animation doesn't do it for me it's just it's very very weird and it's unfortunate I because this movie with my dad this movie doesn't deserve it doesn't deserve that it's 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 as no, good as any amazing. live action movie these characters were as well fleshed out as anything live action transformers has ever done i completely agree i would actually say it's better than live action transformers has done uh period outside of well not period outside of the recent two yeah, well, I mean, and even if you say it's better, I, I I agree. Like I like, like I said, Rise of the Beast had a special spot in my heart, but this one was just a straight up good movie. Now I want to ask you. Hopefully, this thing will get a will get a, a following on, on on digital. Hopefully, people will like you know give it a lot of views, and hopefully, they do come back and do a sequel, even though. I don't know if they will because some of these actors like Scarlett Johansson and Chris Hemsworth are not cheap. So uh, where can the story go from here? Because the thing that I liked is that this did not resolve all the problems. We have set up Optimus and Megatron to be lifelong rivals, but we still got that whole Quintesson story. So that has to be the focus of the next two films, I would assume, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We have just started the great Cybertronian Wars, uh, plural. There's uh, more than that, one. 
Oh, yes, there's more than one. Uh, in G1, that started with the Contessons, actually, <laughs> hilariously. Um, the first cyber, great cyber tournament war was the Autobots and the Decepticons teaming up against the Quintessons. That's what I was gonna. That's what I was thinking they were gonna do. They were gonna have to. That Optimus and Megatron were gonna have to work together at some point. I could see Transformers Two, if they even call it that, because this is one, starting off with like a battle between Optimus and the Autobots and Megatron and the Decepticons. Did they even call them Decepticons in this movie? I don't think they even said that word. At the post credit sequence only. Oh, I didn't even see it. I should have stayed. I didn't even see that post credit sequence. It's literally the post credit sequence. Megatron brands off uh, with the Decepticon logo and, and calls himself and Matt Carew the Decepticons. But that's it. Otherwise, no. And that's still cool. But, um, okay. So maybe the, the, the film opens with like a battle between them and then the Quintesson thing starts up again. Now, how were the Quintessons... You said that they were in the G1 lore. Was it was, it was it handled the same way? Do you remember? Oh, gosh. It's it's different. Uh, you've actually seen Quintessons in the 86 movie. They were the judges. Oh, shit. I did not know it was the same people. I gotta... I gotta... That I is, really gotta go back into Transformers, bro. As you know, it's been years. Oh, yeah. Um, in G1, the Quintessons built the, the uh, Transformers on Cybertron. They didn't make Cybertron. That's still Primus. Right. But so Primus did not create... In, in this lore, Primus created the Transformers. In right, that which lore... Which is more normal. Yeah. He's like God, that, basically. He In every continuity except for G1, it's usually Primus. But in G1, it's actually the Quintessons that built the Transformers. And they were building them as either military equipment, which is the Decepticons, or as home goods, which would be the Autobots. Right. Do you, do you think there's a possibility that they could, in the, the next two films, do a story where, we, similar to what you just said, we, they, they discover, both Megatron and Optimus, they discover that the Quintessons actually did create them and that it was hidden from them for many, many years? Because that would be another good twist that would be in line with the original continuity. While, But again, that's like you said, the original continuity they're kind of going in a different direction here, but that could be a possibility that they're they're basically going against their own makers, and that would add an extra layer of drama to this conflict, if you ask me. I agree. Um, what I would actually do is I would go with the idea, of, I would mix it a little bit, mm -hmm. um, where they were still created by Primus. Right. That's, that was pretty well set up, and, I mean, we have in the light of... No child of Primus is born without a dog. And by the way, I did want to say something about that. I loved how at the beginning of the film, they're giving you the backstory, but it's within the guise of Optimus looking at old records. That, that was, was brilliant. So that was brilliant. Yeah, because it's not just like all these movies, they have like just a flashback at the beginning to, to start. Like Even the Transformers 1 in 2007 had that shit. But here, it was like in the middle of a Indiana Jones type of heist, and we got to see the backstory for the audience. And it, but it still fit in with the story. I just wanted to well, say that that was very well done. It was very well done, and also it's in, in line with the personality of Orion Pax in some continuities, where he was a records keeper. There you go. So um, you were saying to, to mix the, the the origin stories. That was your idea. Yeah. So what I would do is I would I would not have them be the creators, but what if you know they they, they were created by Primus, but what if the uh, reason that they got found by the uh, Brain, which your work place quintessons um mm. maybe the quintessons showed up to enslave them and then sell them they were slavers and i mean that's, that's isn't that kind of what already happened in a way not entirely but set no prime entirely, we were there pretty much you know they were slaves we were getting, yes yes absolutely um but you know maybe that's why the primes rose up against them and you have this war you that know what i you know what I would love, even though they're not, they're not going to do this, if we got a prequel to the prequel where we got to see the original Primes and that war, oh, like... Oh, absolutely. Oh, that would have been awesome. Well, you want, you want something fun here. Mm-hmm. In most continuities, the original 13 Transformers created by Primus, and that is usually a thing, mm -hmm. one of them betrays everyone and joins up with Unicron, and you know the name of this person. It's the Fallen. They did that already. Well, they I mean, not, not not entirely, but they did. In, in, yeah, that was not a very good movie. But yeah. No, but but that's who that is. 
as right. who that's supposed to be. Um, and the way he behaves in every continuity other than that movie is the way we had in uh, Rise of the Beast, where he had his own little pawn there. Oh, the Unicron thing, right. Well, yep. I mean, I will say this. As much as I love Unicron, uh, I don't think he should be a part of this trilogy. Because no, that, that's not... almost like a bigger threat for down the road. Unicron is a great thing to do once you've gotten through a lot. Yeah. You want to get through the Cybertron stuff, and you want to get through the Earth stuff. So you now, are you saying that you think that they should eventually go to Earth? Because... I kind of like the fact that they're not on Earth. I like the whole Cybertronian story. You know what I mean? Maybe I would not. I would not go to Earth. I would not go to Earth for a original three trilogy. But if they want to do a four, five, and six, that's where I'd go to Earth. They they could also do it to where the third film ends with them going to Earth. Sure, absolutely. And then um, then you can pick it up from the game or from the movies or whatever they're going to tie it into. Yeah. Um, I like this enough that I want to see their own take on, you know, Transformers on Earth because that does work when done well. Yeah. It's a shame, man. Like, I, I, I really like this film, and I went online, and there's a lot of movie review people who aren't even Transformers fans who were praising this movie. Like, critically, it got a lot of love. I don't trust Rotten Tomatoes at all, but it got a very good score there. People loved it, but it's just people did not go see the movie, and it pisses me off for all the things I outlined earlier. They just didn't market it that well, um, and it, it's just too bad because I I had a great time. The movie didn't waste any time. Like it was just no, it didn't. It was it it, it did a great job of establishing the characters early on, the friendship, the the secret discovery of what's going on with the Quintessons and fucking uh, Sentinel, and then you know sort of their rebellion. Like I, I thought it was all covered very well. Like it was a good solid prequel, and it's hard to do prequels because you know where everyone's going to end up. I wasn't Absolutely. even sure if they were going to fully turn Megatron in this film. I knew they were going to turn him, but I wasn't sure, and they did. They did, but I think that was uh, having that happen at the end of the first movie is perfect. Yeah, because you can spend all Transformers two. With dealing with the the war between Optimus Prime and Megatron on Cybertron in the heat of that war, and then your third movie you can deal with the Energy Crisis because that's what leads them off of Cybertron. Now we we had a Energy Crisis before the Matrix came back, so I'm not sure how they play that into it in this form, but that is what led the uh, Transformers off world was the lack of energy. Yeah, they're going to have to figure out a way to write it. All right, man. Well, thanks for being here. Hopefully, people had a good time with this discussion. Um, I appreciate it. And I really do hope that they make a sequel. Even if it's like a straight-to-streaming sequel, like, I don't want the budget to get cut because I really liked the way this movie looked. But it's just a bummer, dude. Like, when a good movie doesn't perform well, it's a bummer because it's it, this is a genuine good movie. Even if you're not a Transformers fan, like... I'm, I consider myself a casual fan of Transformers. I haven't watched a show in decades, probably, a Transformers show. But I do watch all the movies, and I do love the designs, and I love the art, and I love the characters. But even if you have never seen a Transformers film, this is a good movie just to go see. Like, w with your little brother, or even by yourself. It's a good movie. Absolutely. This is worth seeing for anybody, and I think that's what makes it a great family film. There's something in here for everybody. Yeah. Old fans, new fans. It's just, I wish it did better. Anyways, thank you again. Uh, I really appreciate it, Laser Kid, man. All right, we'll talk to you all in the next one. Take care.